Dear professional friends, budding librarians and students of library and information science from different universities in the country and my other professional friends. Good afternoon to all of you. I welcome all of you to this virtual career counseling event of LIS Academy. Friends, to begin with, I am delighted to brief you all a little about LIS Academy and its activities to this virtual gathering. The LIS Academy, Library and Information Science Academy is a professional charitable trust established to work for the professional development and to assist libraries with state-of-art technology. The Academy's primary focus is to provide need-based services to the different types of libraries in the country and work for the advancement of library and information science profession at large. Friends, with this brief about LIS Academy, I would like to brief a little about LIS Academy's virtual events. During this COVID-19 pandemic lockdown, we had organized six weekend webinars on skills for librarianship. It was participated by more than 5,000 library professionals across the country and abroad. LIS Academy has also initiated to organize a monthly lecture series on second Saturdays of every month from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. The speakers of lecture, the lecture series will be nationally and internationally acclaimed academicians and research scientists. The idea of LIS Academy lecture series is to bring in diverse opinion, expectations of policy makers, scientists, managers, administrators and educationists about the profession of librarianship. The eminent LIS leaders will also be among the speakers to address the contemporary trends, issues, technologies related to the LIS profession, their innovative initiatives, success stories and best practices, etc. The LIS lecture series will be a best learning platform for LIS professionals. The first lecture was held on 14th November 2020. Padma Bhushan, Professor P. Balaram, former director of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, delivered his first talk. The complete video of this event can be watched from LIS Academy YouTube channel. Friends, now we have planned a tailor-made program that is career counseling for the benefit of beginners of LIS profession and LIS students of different universities in India. We have with us in this program Dr. Anand Bhairappa, Head Office of Data and JRD Memorial Library, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore and Dr. Nagappa Bakkanavar, AGM and IRC Head, Tata Consultancy Services, Bangalore as panelists to moderate the event. I welcome both of them on behalf of LIS Academy. We have very eminent resource persons with us, namely Sri Braj Kishore Gupta Ji, a renowned motivational speaker in India and mentor of Jain Step Bangalore. Srimati K. V. Lakshmi, Digital Workspace Portfolio Advisor, Cell India Markets Private Limited, Bangalore. Mr. Prasanna, Internal Communication Specialist from Amazon India, Bangalore. We were to listen to another giant career counseling speaker, Sri Jayaprakash Gandhi from Salem, Tamil Nadu, the most sought after career counselors in India. Because of his pre occupancy, he could not be with us today. We have another important event in this program today that is signing of MOU with Mrs. Net Analytics for extending the free access to their English grammar tool Sententia, a language laboratory to all the LIS Academy members and the schools of library science across the country. We have requested Mr. Satish Hegde from Sententia to introduce their tool for 10 minutes in this program also. And he has also given a product demo 
in a separate video which has been uploaded to LIS Academy YouTube channel. Please get to learn how about of the sentencia and learn English at your leisure. I take this opportunity to welcome all the resource persons and Mr. Lakshmi Narayana, Chief Operations Officer of Net Analytics, who will be signing MOU with us with LIS Academy in a short while. I also thank office bearers of member office bearers and members of Madhya Pradesh Library Association and Varisa Library Academy in associating with us in organizing all events. I also thank the office bearers and members of Madhya Pradesh Library Association and Varisa Library Academy in associating with us in organizing all our events in future. I welcome all of them to this event. Last but not the least, LIS Academy is signing an MOU with the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, the FIKI, to work together for placement enhancement for LIS professionals. We look forward to work with them and see that a better employability is achieved for our LIS budding professionals. With this, I thank one and all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Kundur, for uh, introducing to the audience. And also uh, congratulate you on uh, arranging such wonderful sessions for the budding librarians. And it's our privilege to be part of your the career counseling session, which is going to start now. In this regard, I'm happy to chair a session uh, with Anand. You know, recently I had a chance to interact with uh, some of the recruiters from various sectors. On the job openings and uh, performance of the candidate, uh, uh, performance of the candidates in the interview, everyone is concerned about the employability of the fresh graduates, especially from uh, colleges and schools. Just to curious to know, what is there in the basket for the uh, budding LIS professionals? What are the focus areas one has to look into it? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, thanks Dr. Nagappa. The question uh, you mentioned about employability concern by industry uh, is a you know question they have since many years. And uh, so both of us have industry experience. Uh, if you look at industry, industry always perceives that the employability percentage of fresh graduates coming out of colleges are less than 20%. Yeah, I agree with you. Whereas uh, if you go to the academics, academics feel differently. Uh, they say that they are trying to do their best and uh, uh, they feel that, uh, you know, not just 20, more than 50% of, uh, you know, fresh graduates are employable kind of a thing. But that is a fact. Yeah. There is a gap in the uh, industry perception and, and the academia. academic ethic. So, if you look at today's program, uh, LIS Academy has really planned to bridge that gap. Uh, so, in my opinion, uh, today if you look at uh, the perception of the industry, they feel that the graduates coming out of the colleges have really good decent technical skills, but their concern is soft skills. And they are right. Yeah. Say for example, you may be technically very sound. But if you fail to communicate effectively and you know that will be a difficult for them to really employ you. So from that point of view, I think it's very important to have a soft skills. There is also a saying in the industry that soft skills will make you a leader, but you need a technical skill to get it. Yes, yes, yes. You and I, I to agree with your statement. <laughs> right. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so uh, today's program is really planned to bridge all those gaps. And thanks to LIS Academy for putting together this program. And if you really look at the uh, list of speakers we have today, we have a really eminent uh, speakers from industry. Some of them are entrepreneurs, some of them are practitioners. And uh, they are not only going to talk about skills and gaps, they also introduce one or two tools which will really be enabled to all the audience here with a free of cost and that should hopefully help them to really bridge the gaps. Oh, that's wonderful, so, including uh, tools. Including tools. Yeah. So coming back to the tools, so there is a tool by name Sententia which will really assist all of us in uh, you know writing better English and making sentences grammatically correct. 
so we have uh, one uh, from uh, sententia uh, dr satish hegde who is an iim uh, graduate who has 20 plus years of industry experience he also worked in uh, uh, two continents and uh, he has uh, kind enough to agree to give a talk about communication skills and uh, maybe we can invite him on the dais and we can uh, listen to his talk uh, as a, B- a first lecture of this program uh, so without wasting much time we can probably invite dr satish hegde to come on dais and uh, deliver his talk on the communication skills uh, dr satish hegde uh, please come on stage and uh, please feel free to deliver your talk thank you anand for uh, setting the context it is really you have given lot of uh, lights on the uh, the current session uh, let us listen to uh, dr satish over to you satish thank you hello my name is satish hegde i am from net analytics technologies bangalore i am mba from i am bangalore and worked in the corporate industry for 20 years in india as well as in two other continents today i am here to talk about the importance of soft skills yes i am talking i am going to talk about importance of soft skills the question is what is this soft skills if there is a soft skill is there any hard skill yes you are right being a library science students being a library science professionals the knowledge about library science is your hard skill okay the knowledge about your subject is your hard skill being a engineer probably you know my hard skills are the technical knowledge how whether i can write better uh, uh, you know java or react js or how many technologies i know the soft skills are basically the communication the team building act the team building capacity or how you really cope up in the team your emotional intelligence before going to details of the soft skills i want you to visit one of the harvard business school case study which is available on the youtube which is literally available on the youtube the harvard business case study says that you know the success in the life especially in the professional life literally based on your soft skills your hard skills are important however the soft skills are also very important so being library science professionals to have a great career to really excel in the corporate world or in the educational world let us really understand today you know apart from your hard skills what are the soft skills you need let me you know start my presentation so what are really the soft skills the soft skills are basically the combination of people skills social skills communication skills character or personality tra- traits attitudes career attributes and so many other people skills related attributes okay imagine that you know you, you are really good in your hard skill but you are really a bad team player do you think that you know you can really progress in your career no way no way i'll tell you one story here okay it's a very very small story so what happened was you know there was there were three workers three workers working on the road side what they were doing they were literally crushing the stones with the help of the hammer and you know mr satish was going there and he asked the first worker remember all the three people were doing the same thing okay now satish asked him a question sir what are you doing he said hey, can't you see mr satish i mean this is a hot sun and i am working so hard can't you i mean my life is so miserable i mean i'm doing the hard work 
then what the satish did was he went to the second question second person and asked him the same question so what are you doing he said satish i am crushing the stones okay then satish he went and went to the third person and asked the same question what are you doing so he said sir there is a temple and i am building the temple the you please look at the three answers the question is the same the work is the same but the answers are different what is the difference the difference is the attitude is it not so our attitude towards work is also a pretty important thing it is not only your hard skills the soft skills also matter so what are the different kinds of soft skills which can help you to excel your career communication skills when you say communication skills is it only speaking no it is not only the speaking it is lswr skills listening speaking writing and reading and at the end of this you know uh, 10 minutes talk i will tell you how being a lis community members how being the members of lis academy how you are going to be beneficial with a platform which you can utilize to improve your english proficiency so coming back communication skill is very important to excel in your career unless you speak well unless you elaborate unless you really express yourself in various contexts in various scenarios it is very very difficult of course in the corporate world even an entry itself is very difficult unless you speak well unless you write well unless you read well and unless you listen well okay so the second important so soft skill is of course job interview skills is it not to crack an interview you have to have particular skills you should know how to write a resume you should know how to write a email is it not you have to write a proper email you should know how to reach out to the people who can give you a job you should know where are the different social platforms which can get you a job is it not so job interview skills are also very important and another important skill is presentation skills you should know how how you have to literally bring the flow how you have to design the ppts presentation slides how you can use audio visual materials to impress the people to catch hold of the attention of the audience so presentation skill is also important and very important is team skills is it not team skills leadership skills and time management skills so there are various soft skills which are important to learn it's a continuous process it is basically a continuous learning it's a lifelong journey so today to help you to improve your communication skills to improve your soft skills to help you to better your english proficiency today we have joined hands with lis academy and we are really grateful to lis academy to for giving us an opportunity to join hands with them and we are very very keen to support the members of lis academy with our sententia platform so sententia platform helps you to improve your english proficiency with online language lab with an ai supported english grammar text and style tool so we are here to support you with our platform so that you can practice improve your english english proficiency and we want you to excel in your career we want the library library science students to get better jobs and better career with this 
I am thankful to you for your time and concern. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Satish Agde, for delivering a wonderful talk on soft skills. I am sure our students will get benefit out of your talk. Now I request Professor Kunnur and Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan to sign a MOU between LIS Academy and Net Analytics. Also request them to speak on the same. Dear friends, I am happy to introduce Mr. Lakshmi Narayan Ullal, Chief Operating Officer of Mrs. Net Analytics. LIS Academy is entering into an MOU with Mrs. Net Analytics for extending uh, their Grammarly tool Sentencia, which is being renamed as Langpil, free of cost for the benefit of LIS Academy life members and all the LIS departments of different universities in India who enroll as institutional members of LIS Academy. The LIS Academy membership and life membership and the institutional membership are also free of cost. I thank Mrs. Net Analytics for being with us and helping the entire LIS Academy with their Grammarly tool Sentencia, which is now called as Lankville. Thank you. I now we are exchanging our MOU mutually. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. P. V. Kunur, President of LIS Academy, for extending support and signing MOU with us. Our product Sententia is being renamed as Langquil in this month. Brief about Langquil. Langquil is an AI based online language lab with comprehensive platform for learning LSRW skills. We believe that there is no one size fits all and Langquil provides personalized and adaptive learning for its users. We are offering free subscription of Langquil for LIS Academy members as CSR initiative by us. Thanks again, LIS Academy, for giving us the opportunity to be part of LIS community. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kunnur and uh, Lakshmi Narayanan. Now, Anandan, coming back to you. Go ahead. Can we discuss again on various aspects related to career building? Why not? So, we'll okay. continue the discussion. There are uh, three popular C's uh, which are talking across the industries. Can you deliberate on it? Three C's related to communication? It can be. Okay. So the three C's what I have heard about communication which are important is, so one is uh, competence and second is commitment and the third one is confidence. 100% we are selling in the same boat. Yes, confidence, yeah. competence and commitment. Okay. So these are three C's generally people stress on when it comes to communication. Uh, I think we need to really uh, elaborate on those things. Uh, LIS Academy has identified an excellent expert to deliberate uh, more on that. Uh, and the speaker we have to address all of that is Braj Kishore Gupta. Braj Kishore Gupta is a you know very uh, well known person in the communications domain. He is a thought leader. He is a columnist. Uh, he is a corporate uh, trainer, and he is a widely respected person. And uh, he also is known for. Uh, you know, converting common man into a leader. Oh. I think, uh, you know, I'm very curious to listen to his talk and uh, I think the same with you. Yeah, so, sounds without wasting much time, let's invite him uh, to come on Dias and deliver a talk. Now, may I invite uh, Braj Gupta to come on the Dias and deliver the talk. Good evening, everyone. At the outset, I express my profound sense of gratitude to Elias Academy especially to Professor Dr. P. V. Konur for giving me this privilege and honor. Nothing motivates me more than an opportunity to add value to the stu student community. After all, if we want a great India, if we want an empowered India, it is only through empowering the students and that is exactly what Dr. P. V. Kunur is doing. Thank you, sir. I compliment you for all the efforts you are making. Friends, 
we are here this evening to discuss a particular topic given to me and that is confidence, competence, commitment, stepping stones to budding leadership. First of all, I would like to ask a question. How is this topic relevant today? Why are we talking about values like confidence? Why are we talking about competence? And why are we talking about commitment? It's very, very important for us to understand that today we are passing through difficult phase of history. Never was humanity faced with such challenge. Are you aware of what I am referring to, my friends? Yes, I am referring to the monster called COVID-19 that had wrought havoc to humanity. It is against this backdrop we have to understand and appreciate the value of today's topic and that is the need for budding leadership. And I am here to tell you if we want the budding leadership that must go through three important values and they are confidence, competence and commitment. Do we understand those terms or not? What is meant by the term confidence? Confidence is all about others having faith in you? No, not at all my friends. Confidence has nothing to do what others think about you. Confidence is all about having faith in yourself. Confidence is all about having belief in yourself. As a matter of fact, confidence is having faith in yourself when the whole world has lost faith in you. Are you one of those who have faith in yourself even when your loved ones have lost faith in you? Today, it is that time, my friend. Confidence is at the stake everywhere. And today, there is a need to have that confidence. In other words, confidence is all about self-confidence. It must begin from within. It must not come from outside. Having talked about confidence and the need to have that, let's also understand the term competence. What is competence, my friend? It's talent? It's merit? Not exactly. Competence is not all about talent and merit. Competence is about your readiness to act. Competence is all about your effective intelligence. What is meant by that? Effective intelligence is all about your desire to take action. There are people who have ideas. There are people who have vision. There are people who have dreams. There are people who have aspirations, but they are too lazy to act. So friends, competence is all about your readiness to act. Competence is all about your willingness to swing into action. And what is commitment then? Commitment is your dedication. Commitment is your loyalty. In fact, William Shakespeare's line is often quoted by the world to be or not to be to be or not to be that is the question as a matter of fact commitment is not about to be or not to be commitment is all about to be commitment means once you have taken a decision you do it like we have in the Mahabharata Arjuna Spratigya Dwayam Arjuna Spratigya Dwayam no Danyam no Palayanam so before Arjuna it was very very clear that he had no choice either to surrender or to run away from the battlefield he had to fight so friends commitment is all about your willingness to act your willingness to perform it is like do or die 
So this world respects those who are action-oriented people. If you have a look at my slide, the second one, you see everyone is holding the globe, is holding the universe. That is exactly what has happened today. Today, Corona has made us realize that we are all one. We are all one. In the past, there was discrimination in the name of color, in the name of caste, in the name of religion. But one positive thing Corona has done is this discrimination has gone once and for all. It's very, very important for me not only to highlight how the world has become one, it is also important for me to tell you the way Corona has caused havoc to us. It was 11th March. I still remember the date, 11th March 2020 that declared Corona or SARS that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, a global pandemic. And thereafter, my friend, there has been no looking back at all. What has Corona done to the education world? Unfortunately, this is the biggest disruption. This is the biggest dis disruption that has been brought to the educated people across the world. 1.6 billion students have been adversely affected across the world. And you will be shocked to know, my friends, that 24 million of them will not be able to come back, will not be able to resume their studies. That is the kind of tragedy Corona or the SARS virus has done to society. Against this backdrop, you have to realize the need and the relevance of the topic of today. And that is, as I discussed at the outset. Friends, having understood about the impact of Corona, let's also understand the need for leadership. What is leadership after all? Leadership is an opportunity. Leadership is an opportunity. Opportunity for what? An opportunity to reach out to people. It is an opportunity to create legacy. It is an opportunity to serve society. It is an opportunity to help. It is an opportunity to add value. Many students in particular, they wonder, how can they be leaders? How can they be of value? I'm reminded of an incident of my life. Maybe that would help you understand the relevance of leadership. It was almost eight years ago. I was in a hurry to reach home. The reason was my dad was not well. I took a flight from Bangalore to Kolkata. Yes, friend, I am telling you a story that happened eight years ago. I took a flight from Bangalore to Kolkata. I was coming out of the airport. And outside the airport, I found a foreigner, a lady. She was a kind lady. She had something in her hands and she was distributing. In fact, she was about to distribute and and the moment she stretched her hand to distribute food items that she was holding, I saw there a group of children who were waiting to get their share. In the meantime, a girl who was the tallest among the children stretched her hand and seized the food. I felt bad. I felt other children were deprived of their share. But next moment, something happened and that surprised me, my friends. Do you know what happened? That 
girl, tall girl, asked all of the children to come and collect their share. I was surprised I couldn't, I couldn't understand the logic. Here was a poor girl, a girl who did not have enough food to eat and she was a leader today. I was wondering how could she have such sense of leadership. So friends, leaders are not created by society. It is not the society that creates a good leader, my friends. It is a good leader that creates a good society. That is what you have to understand. So never think, never think that you are too poor. Never think that you are too young to be a leader. Not at all. It is a value. It is ethics. It is your vision that makes you a leader, my friend. And therefore, it is important for you also to realize it is the hard time like the COVID. It is the hard time that is the time of suffering that gives you an opportunity to emerge as a leader. Have you forgotten the story of Mahatma Gandhi? How he was thrown out of the train and that tragedy transformed him into a great leader, my friends. So let us see this COVID-19 as an opportunity to emerge as a leader. Now, I'm here to tell you, to be a leader, you have to be awakened from within. You have to be awakened from within. Each one of us is waiting to be awakened, my friends. Unless and until there is an awakening inside, you will not realize your potential. Our scriptures say, that thou art. You are the spark of divine. You are not weak and you are not failing. Let me tell you an interesting story. Once in the jungle, the young of a lion lost its mother. That was unfortunate. But the fortunate thing that happened a herd of sheep was passing by and they took pity on the young cub. They adopted the young cub. Right from that day, the young cub was not an orphan at all. It had got a new mother in the form of a sheep. From that day, the young cub associated itself, aligned itself with the new family, friends, and that was the family of sheep. Time passed by, and one day, in the same jungle, there was a lion roaring. The sound of that roar triggered this young cub which was no more young, it had grown into an adult. It realized for the first time that it was not a ship. It started roaring back. And that was the day, my friend, this lion realized it was a lion. Till recently, till in the past, it had associated itself with the family of ship. It considered itself weak like others. So that was the day of discovery, friends, for that cub. How is this story relevant to you, my friends? This story is relevant primarily because today we live in an age of information boom. Today there is an avalanche of information. You will be surprised to know that in the last 30 years, the amount of information we have gathered that exceeds the information we had in the previous 5,000 years at this critical juncture where there is so much of information, we are losing clarity. So, to be a leader, my friend, you must be able to identify yourself. You must be able to reinvent yourself. You must find yourself. You are not the ship, my friend. You are the lion. You must rediscover, you must find your true identity. 
That is why I love to say Tattva Masi, that thou art, you are the spark of divine. And you must know that you are the spark of divine, my friend. That would be the first step towards budding leadership, which is the essence of today's topic. Friends, you'd ask me, sir, what is the road ahead? What is the road ahead for me? And I'm here to tell you, my friend, remember one word, just five letter word, and that is spark. S P S P A R K. Spark. The letter S stands for simplifying. As a budding leader, as an emerging leader, you must be able to understand the complexity of the situation because the problem of all problems is to know what is the problem that is all about simplifying the situation. You must be able to simplify if you are to become a leader who matters. And after S, the second letter, my friend, in this world is P. P is all about purpose. How do you become a leader? You become a leader primarily because of the purpose, the goal, the objective. It is the largeness of the purpose. It is the objective that you have. The purpose and the goal that you have must be larger than life. If you recall the freedom struggle of India, our leaders were great leaders primarily because they were fighting not for their, for their own benefits. They were fighting for liberating their motherland. So friends, as a student, you must have a purpose and that purpose must be worth living for, worth fighting for. And having had the clarity of the purpose in life, you must be authentic. That is the third letter A. What is meant by being authentic? Being authentic means being true to yourself. You must be true to yourself. You should not pretend to be what you are not. Today people are out to pretend what they are not. Gandhiji never pretended. He was what he was. So it's important for you to understand what is, is, what is, is, and what is not, is not. And therefore, have the courage to accept what is and reject what is not. And friends, our, the next lighter in the word spark is resilience. What is meant by resilience? Resilience is all about your courage, to fight, your courage to bounce back. You don't get defeated in life till you accept it. And therefore, you must say no to every defeat, to every stumbling block that comes your way. The other day, I was talking about Jack Wells' autobiography, straight from the guts. There he says, if you have not learned to fail, you will not know how to succeed in life. And therefore, setbacks and breakdowns pave our way. In fact, without breakdowns, you will not have breakthroughs in life. That is why I say, hard times make us true leaders, tough time makes you great leaders and therefore you must be in a position to bounce back in life. And thereafter the word we have is K and K is about knowledge. What is meant by knowledge? Knowledge is not about facts and figure. Knowledge is also about an attitude to be receptive. That is a must because the world we live in today is a volatile world. Things are changing rapidly and things are changing very fast, my friends. As youngsters like you all, as the custodian of libraries across the country, you must have that attitude to receive, that attitude to accept. If you have that attitude, my friend, I must tell you, because if you stop learning, if you stop learning, you will stop leading. 
in order to be able to lead a life you must have that attitude of acceptance or the attitude of receptivity so leadership for you my friends for young students like you is all about understanding the value of spark understanding and appreciating these attributes of life now it's equally important my friend for you to realize that the time we are passing through is the toughest phase of human history and therefore you have to also rise to the occasion and contribute to society how will you do that to sum up and to conclude i would just redefine redefine six letter word leader in my own way the word leader begins with l and l my friends is all about leading and leading is all about learning as we discussed a while ago and when you learn you will be able to lead and when you lead my friend you will be able to create legacy leadership after all is is all about legacy creation you must create legacy you must live something good behind you my friend and the second letter in the word leader is e e my friends is all about emotion management what is emotion management being able to accept the joy and the sorrow bhagavad gita tells us about niskam karm that is you should not be excited about being successful and you should have the same equanimity of mind when you fail in life and therefore emotion management is all about being stoic you should be able to take both success and failures in the same stride my friend and a my friend is all about being articulate as a leader you must have the courage to speak out only when you speak out you will stand out in the world you must stand out mahatma gandhi stood out against the british nelson mandela raised his voice and became a celebrity so is true to everyone who is aspiring to be a leader my friend you must be articulate you must be able to communicate and after a we have the letter d d is all about dare to fail what is meant by dare to fail my friends it is all about taking initiative you should not be obsessed with the outcome you should not be worried too much about the success and failure you must have the courage to take the initiative because a leader is one who takes the initiative in life a leader is one who is willing to act and therefore you must act because a c t act means action changes things action changes things things will change only when you act my friend and in order to act you need tremendous tremendous amount of courage and conviction e is all about enthusiasm enthusiasm is very very important my friend because purpose is important as i talked about purpose in the word spark but when you have the purpose you must pursue your purpose with passion so e is all about enthusiasm a leader is known by the amount of energy he or she has and therefore you must be enthusiastic about achieving the goal and r is all about respect respect is very very important a leader always has respect for society a leader has respect for for values a leader is one who has respect for tradition a leader is one who has respect for the culture of the country a, re- a leader is one who always shows a sense of belongingness to the culture so friends 
To conclude, I would say a leadership is the master skill, especially for students like you. Leadership is one way whereby you can change your life, you can change the society, and leadership is the road ahead for you as the youngster, because India will be a great nation only when, only when youngsters from small villages and towns like you all are able to join the mainstream. One Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, one Mother Teresa, one Swami Vivekananda, and one Mr. Modi, Sri Narendra Modi, will not be enough for the nation. We are a huge nation of one billion plus people. We need a number of leaders, leaders who can rise to the occasion, leaders who can sacrifice their interest and think in terms of the goal and the objective of society. Towards the end, I will just tell you one line and that is in Hindi, Agar aastha hai, agar aastha hai, to band dwar bhi rasta hai. Agar aastha hai, to band dwar bhi rasta hai. Meaning thereby, if you have the faith, if you have the faith, if you have the trust and belief, even the door that is closed, that will pave the way for you, my friend. So you have to have tremendous amount of faith in yourself. The belief in yourself will decide how far you will go as a leader, my friend. And I'm sure you will rise to the occasion and I'm sure you will become great asset to the society and to the family and to the loved ones. Once again, I express my gratitude to the LIS Academy for giving me this honor and privilege. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gupta ji for uh, your wonderful uh, and thought provoking session. It's really a motivational talk. I'm sure all the students got motivated by your words. Your session has made me to think on many skills that I have acquired during my last 23 year careers and changed four jobs in eight years and last 15 years I'm in the fifth job in the corporate sector. Anand, what do you think about dream jobs or job changes in the LIS field or the related areas? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Say for example, if you look at our previous generation, uh, our uncles, our fathers who really work, uh, probably they never imagined uh, of, or they did not get a chance to really change their jobs. They joined a government job, they ended up retiring from there. Yeah, true, Today, true. I mean, as you said, you yourself has experienced uh, either compulsion or a need for changing jobs. Uh, I completely agree with you. Even I have changed about seven or eight jobs. Uh, just two years back, I changed my job as well. Okay. Now, uh, my view is, uh, you know, your first job may not be your right job. Mm -hmm. uh, you may not get your uh, dream job at first go. I think, well you know, as a professional, if you want to really make a big career, you need to really keep learning and, uh, you know, keep changing the jobs. You should not really hesitate. The way I look at that is your change of job will really help you to grow as a professional. You Correct. get an opportunity to learn new things. You get an opportunity to interact with uh, new people. You get an opportunity to engage with new projects and all. That's a big thing. In fact, every job change, not only job change, every leader change, say, for example, in TCS, uh, you may be spending 10, 10 plus years, but you might have changed your leaders, the bosses you are report to. Even when you change your boss, there will be a lot of learning. The way you align to them, the way they expect, he may expose you to better project, he may demand you to learn new skill like that. I think it's very, very important and essential, and it has really uh, become very common uh, in the industry today, particularly for our generation and next generation. 
the job change and the dream jobs uh, if you really want to have you have no option but to change jobs now we have a lot of examples uh, in our profession that some of them have really excelled in our profession and also we have very few people who have gone out of the profession and excelled there as well in fact uh, our next speaker uh, lakshmi harsha is one such example uh, she is a uh, uh, she has done her masters degree from bangalore university then uh, she had a short stint at uh, ncsi and uh, she started her career uh, with axa and uh, she did a very good job on data analytics business analytics etc she was leading a big team now she moved to the shell and lis academy has really identified her as a next speaker that's really good uh, our participants if you are really looking for making a big career outside lis domain by using lis skills i think lakshmi's talk will have a lot of learnings uh, so we can invite lakshmi to come on dias and share her experiences and her uh, title of the uh, topic is also very interesting sneak peek into personal career i oh, think so without, yes i think without wasting time uh, let's invite uh, uh, lakshmi harsha uh, to take over and deliver our talk good evening everybody myself lakshmi so what am i going to cover in next 10 minutes let's talk about like you know how do we learn on the go and execute on the go let me sneak peek into my own career journey that would help you to understand the path which i took the deviations i made and the learnings i had to wherever i am today having completed my masters in lisc from bangalore university and then like you know clearing ugc net i wanted a job okay i didn't have any particular goal to start with but i wanted a private job of course i was pretty much influenced by some of my seniors who were well settled at that time in the corporate sector anand you might know dr anand dr mohan dr rajendra babu all these guys one common thing they had was like you know ncsi certification so i also wanted to do it so i got an opportunity uh, to join informatics as information analyst here i had to upskill myself to do lot of research on internet so how did i do it i leveraged my uh, you know lis research or reference services uh, the research methodology course and then like you know that's how like you know i i uh, upskilled myself and i used to deliver my project through ncsi training i further got skilled on digital libraries database searching statistics research methodology and around computer programming these things really helped me to kind of like you know in each uh, stint of my career soon after ncsi i had opportunities to apply in garment sector related jobs as well as in private uh, jobs but i wanted to kind of like you know work in a corporate uh, area so what i did was uh, i got an opportunity to work in astrazeneca it's a pharmaceutical company as a assistant manager for knowledge management so here i was responsible for defining a uh, knowledge management framework now did i know how to do it no i didn't know because except for one paper what we were taught in ncsi uh, nothing much i knew so here i had to learn on my own i had to refer a lot of books and then i had to talk to some of my friends who were there in the industry doing some similar work also like you know while you are launching some new service or when you are launching something to do new in the organization it will take time Parale parallelly you have to uh, you know launch some additional services that will kind of you know keep the leadership or management team uh, excited about you so what i did was i started a newsletter service astrazeneca being a pharmaceutical company uh they were pretty much interested in lot of like you know the um, industry trends within uh, uh pharma uh, industry as well as like you know the upcoming or competitive landscape who others are launching what kind 
of uh, uh, products as well as like you know they wanted to automate their entire sales force i worked on that particular project also okay for which i had to upskill myself around like you know what does automation do how does salesforce work so why why am i telling all these things because it is important for us to continuously learn continuously upskill yourself talk to your friends in the industry and apply that particular knowledge in your day to day work later i had to switch because i got an opportunity to work in axa which is an insurance uh, company here i handled multiple roles as a research analyst research manager digital research consultant uh, so this entailed multiple subject knowledge which i had to acquire over a period of uh, time for which i did undergo certain certifications like licensed from indian institute of insurance as well as like you know the digital marketing uh, from uh, indian uh, uh, school of business hyderabad and then like you know it strategy consulting from indian institute of management bangalore okay so here i was there like you know pretty long like you know around 12 to 13 uh, years so whenever i was changing my role i had to upskill myself like you know from an individual contributor uh, to people manager so you you had to kind of get hold of the art of like you know managing people how what do they want working with senior management what do they want so so like you know it is imperative that you should have a learning mindset to achieve some of your uh, goals then i got another interesting opportunity that is in my current company that is shell here it's been like you know close to 4 years i'm associated with this company but yeah i've handled three different roles as a innovation advisor for emerging technologies digital services manager and then currently i'm the portfolio advisor for the mobile mac and uh, microsoft store applications here i mean like you know it's a very technical role i would say so what does that mean i have to kind of like you know upskill myself around these technologies i have to attend lot of trainings both internal which are like you know the company specific as well as like you know something around uh, uh, linkedin to understand how do we manage a portfolio how do we kind of like you know keep it going so all such things will always be there so how do we kind of like you know go about doing these things okay let me start with like you know when you start as a student you will start searching for job do make use of your current subjects which you have been kind of like you know uh, studying or have studied some of the key subjects which i can think of are like you know your research methodology your statistics uh, related uh, subject because that's the hot cake in the market uh, now there are a lot of like you know the data analyst content analyst content researcher data science related jobs out uh, there so make your resume in such a way that like you know these keywords come up uh, in your resume whenever you uploaded on to like you know portals like uh, nokri or indeed or any such uh, portals so you you know that like you know one particular job opportunity is very interesting to you but how do you apply for it okay so first and foremost you would know the company uh, you know you should know like you know what are the products and services so do the background check of that particular company by understanding what is that they do okay and then your job role okay what are the specific skills that requires for you to perform on a day to day basis so how do how should you be highlighting that in your resume during your interview discussions so just uh, you know uh, make that very very clear and don't keep your resume very static let it be like you know uh, dynamic and then like you know uh, how 
do also prepare yourself during your interview uh, discussion that how the skills what you have how can you kind of apply to that particular job role and how you can add a value to the uh, company and again not everybody knows everything if you think like you know there are certain skill sets which you currently do not possess while kind of like you know applying for that job make that very clear to the interviewer saying that you will acquire those skill sets capabilities on the go while working on the uh, job and tell them like you know this is how i'm going to learn these are the certifications which i have identified either they can be self sponsored or company sponsored okay fine now i have a uh, job so what uh, next okay so on getting a job what is very important is first and foremost what are you hired for okay you are hired to do certain set of daily activities so first understand and start delivering uh, them and if you think there are certain gaps talk to your you know a uh, leadership team or your line manager or somebody who is kind of like you know higher authority uh, or like you know even with colleagues or like you know company or with your friends and then like you know start uh, preparing that's how i did it in each of my role even today i have been learning and then like you know i have been uh, delivering okay also within the organization you are associated with there will be multiple opportunities and also try and understand how like you know what are the promotional uh, like you know if you want to get promoted to the next level what are those specific competencies do you need okay so for example like you know people management it's like you know chicken and egg situation right i will not get it until i have it here like you know it's not like that so ask for a project which will involve lot of uh, members or like you know, at least a two three or members so tell them that you would manage so you manage and show your ability as to like you know how you manage people how you manage your uh, deliverables how you manage your stakeholders stakeholders in this case could be like you know somebody who has sponsored that particular project or somebody who is going to receive that particular project so keep those things in mind and what are the additional skills that might be required see as you kind of like you know go higher up in your career you might be required to kind of like you know think strategically maybe like you know how do you manage your financials but that also needs to be uh, taken care and whichever industry you are associated with do have a fair knowledge about their products their services their marketing uh, strategies and what's in the uh, future okay now like you know after being in an organization for certain period you might want to switch jobs uh, because like you know maybe something uh, interesting okay so again go back your work starts from zero you have to kind of like you know update your resume there is no need to kind of like you know put everything that you have done so just put only the key things that are very important for that particular job or for that particular uh, role okay and uh, keep an eye on the trends in the industry how do how to do it there are quite a few sources outside uh, 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 like you know if uh, the day to day uh, news related uh, websites i kind of like you know look, look into uh, digital trends and then there is uh, another site known as technocrunch and then um, even linkedin for that matter uh as well as like you know futurism to understand some of the future technologies etc so always like you know keep uh, such things in mind try and understand what are the certifications that are uh, out there that will help you in your particular career and have a learners mindset guys that's very very important learning will not stop just because you are just soon after you finish your mlic so do have that right attitude 
to kind of like you know take the feedback and make things work and third thing and most important network 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 amongst your friends amongst your co colleagues amongst uh, the people within the industry whom you know and do benefit like you know uh, uh, academies like that of LIS Academy, NCSI Net Academy. So such things will help you to be like you know on top of the things. So I wish you all the best. Do reach out if you have any questions. I would be happy to answer. Thank you so much uh, Lakshmi for uh, giving many hints on how to build career beyond libraries with your own examples. To build career out of library field, what are the top one or important skills one has to work on? Anand, what's your thoughts on these areas? Okay, so I mean if you ask me what are the skills to really build uh, to make a big career, uh, I'll give you one uh, simple, you know, practical story I have heard. I was uh, sharing a dais with uh, one of the HR consultant, like the way we are talking now, and uh, she was a HR consultant for a big company. So when she was talking, she said, if you find two people who are technically equally good, and uh, whom do you choose? They have the best skills, they have the best, uh, you know, graduated from best schools and all. She said, the biggest differentiator in recruiting people is the passion. You may be technically sound, but if you don't have a passion, you will not be able to make a big career in life. Passion so, to do the things. Passion to do things. Whatever yes. you do, be passionate about it and, yes. and do that. And uh, if you look at uh, you know Lakshmi, if you look at uh, next speaker Prasanna, uh, both of them are examples. You know they have always demonstrated. Uh, you know whatever they do, they did it passionately. That's why they are really growing not just in LIS, even outside the library information science. And our next speaker, Prasanna TS, is another example uh, for LIS professionals making very successful career outside LIS domain. And uh, he is the master degree holder from uh, University of Madras. Then he came to NCSA at IIC. He did his uh, information and knowledge management course. Then he worked beautifully and very uh, you know effectively at intel he led the knowledge center and uh, now he is with amazon and uh, he is uh, leading uh, the customer uh, area related uh, things so customer focus customer related queries and uh, the communication marketing these are the areas where you know you don't need much technical skills but that's where library science people can go and really do that and Prasanna is just one example for that and uh, maybe we can invite him to deliver his talk and we will get more insights from his talk so Prasanna can we invite you to come on Dias and deliver uh, your talk on this thank you Anand always passionate persons will be almost excellent in some pop in terms of performance as well as perfection. Prasanna, it is your turn. We, people are eager to listen to you. Over to you. Good evening everyone. I am Prasanna. Uh, going to talk to you today about uh, how to build your career. I am uh, part of Amazon team. I work, uh, I'm being with Amazon for three years and I have a industry experience of 20 years. And I've been talking about this topic for the past 10 years through NCSC and various forums. So today I'm going to talk about uh, very basic things, about five things which you need to know when you want to build your career, right? So I'll not be spending much time on that. I'll just try to keep it as simple as possible. But I want to make sure that you are aware of these five things for you, right? First thing is uh, when you start to build your career, first and foremost thing which you need to think of is your resume, right? Which some people call it as curriculum vitae as well as CV, right? When you build your resume, the important thing you need to think about or write your resume is don't write uh, the list of all the skills what you know whether it's soft or hard skills make sure that uh, you write re relevant skills which are needed which you know well and the other important thing when you uh, write your resume is think of uh, keep a template uh, for your resume build it and keep it ready and ch keep changing it based on the role you apply for the most important thing when you build your resume is 
make sure that you prove them right when i say prove them when you say that you are skilled at certain things you should have that as part of your experience which you are mentioning even if if you are a fresher it's important that if you say that you are good at communication skills you should have one or two examples of whether you have presented anywhere internal conferences or internal forums or seminars or anything keep that as a reference that's very important you prove them in your resume itself the second thing which is important for you is build your personal brand when i say personal brand right you should know about who who are you right? you should be able to convince people that why they should hire you right so let me just take it uh, with a simple example of uh, something called elevator pitch uh, most of you might have heard about it but i will give you a brief what is elevator pitch elevator pitch is nothing but you get a chance to impress someone uh, in the span of uh, taking a lift right when you are with someone uh, in a lift uh, you have a time of only the lift time of going from first floor to 10th floor or fifth floor that is the only time you get you have to impress someone uh, with that limited amount of time where you have to tell that who you are right that's your personal brand so the, i'll tell you a brief example how to do that very simple example is when you say who you are when you introduce yourself it's very important to say that who you are by giving some example or uh, showing that impact you are creating right that's a personal brand so here here example for example when you introduce yourself you should first always start with who you are and what do you do and uh, for to whom you do or uh, whom you are working and then you say that how you are doing it how you are creating an impact to the organization and through various things for example let me introduce myself right i am prasanna working for amazon as internal communications manager and i have been uh, doing this internal communication for uh, tens and thousands of associates who work on the floor by doing innovative communications to them to make sure that they feel valued and get connected with a larger brand of amazon and then they feel that they work for a great place called amazon so that's how i introduce myself where i tell them that this is what i do this is the impact i create this is my target audience so that's how you create your personal brand let me move on to the next topic right so the I, uh, so far we have seen about how to build your resume how to make sure your resume talk for yourself and then speak your personal brand the third and important thing is a guide for a successful interview when i say successful interview uh, i am talking about the entire process of interview right the first and foremost thing is research about the role you apply for research about the company you apply for and next is on sell yourself with uh, skills and abilities right make sure that uh, the skill you possess matches with the job profile that you are applying for the next one is uh, when you face an interview the important thing is star right uh, you have to follow the star process star is nothing but uh, when you are asked a question or when you are asked to explain a concept think of star uh, star as such right star is nothing but uh, situation task analysis and research or results right so you are given a situation and this is the task you have in hand to work on that situation and uh, this is the analysis you have done and this is the action you are taking and finally the results you are going to show and the next is uh, next is on the interview process is uh, body language right it's very important to show that you are interested you are keen on the job right irrespective of whatever be the time or be it a telephonic interview you should always sound positive you should always have a smile if it is a video call or if it is a in person interview you should always smile you should always take it in a positive note irrespective of the question whether it is tough or easier one and then it's important is build a rapport with the interviewer right as much as possible don't think that is like a q and a session but make sure that uh, trying to understand what is asking and then build a rapport if you have a follow up question please ask if you are not able to understand the question please ask that way you build a rapport makes it more conversational than a q and a then the fourth important thing is don't talk too much right don't share too much right you should always up to, uh, answer up to the point the questions the interviewer is asking and keep it only to that level and the final important thing is ask your interviewer insightful questions most of the interviewer ask you whether you have any questions or even if you are not sure of something make sure that you ask insightful question where you get something out of it which will help you to take a decision if you are getting the job or to take a decision if you have to answer the follow up question all those stuff these are the th simple tips for your interview let me just uh, go to the next topic the fourth topic which is why someone should hire you 
right this is very important uh, in most of the interviews this question will be asked why should i hire you or why did you apply for this job or why do you want this job right to put it in simple way it's always important that you understand the job very well you are applying for right that will help you to build confident uh, in yourself and then say that why why you are important and then it's always it's important for you to kind of apply uh, your <coughs> experience right based on the job profile you are applying for uh, so that you can tell right some of the highlights uh, which is matching the current job profile and right? even if you are fresher it's very important to match uh, the job profile it what you have learned and then give some examples of how you have managed to do that in the third important thing is talk results right when you say that this is what i have done what impact it has created in the organization that's what we call results right what is the impact you are creating to the particular organization and uh, make sure that uh, you are the right fit for the job you are applying for how do you do that make sure that you pour in some of the thoughts why you, uh, they need to hire you in terms of this is what i have done this is the impact the it has created i have been outstanding student uh, i have given lectures i have helped the research community whatever be the example uh, that you can give for impact you can use that the final topic which is uh, which i am going to talk today is how to make positive impact in the community you are serving for when i say community it can be an organization it can be a academic organization it can be a corporate organization or anything right you are getting a job so if i give you a job right the question uh, the interviewer might ask is if i give you a job what you can do for me right what you, what you will do long term right you should always think of three things when you answer this right when you think of this how it can give a positive impact first is nurture relationship it's very very important you build a network you build a relationship with the people whom you are working with the uh, subordinates or the superordinates whatever you call with the colleagues and also the organizational line chain till the director lover it's very important you build the relationship right from the day one and second is you should be able to see the bigger picture of what the organization wants to achieve what the organization is looking for right map it map your goals map your library's goals or map your information center's goal towards organization and uh, think of future right where if the company or if the organization is looking at building something for the research community you should always think of what you can do for the research community through your library right through your services and important part is right uh, know your role well right how you can exp- when you say know your role you should always think of what are the other venues you have when you are applying for a job uh, when you are applying for a particular organization how you can help the community which you are applying for which you are joined or uh, which the organization you work for so these are the three important things which you have to think of when you say that how can you impact the community the impacting community is nothing but knowing the role well and then ability to see the bigger picture and the most important thing is nurture relationship or building relationship in the job you are you are in right let me just do a recap uh, while i come to the end of the talk let me just uh, recap some of the five things which i said you want to know right first is first and foremost thing is how to build your resume make sure that you build the right resume uh, for the right job you apply for second is building your personal brand which is nothing but to say who you are or what kind of impact you can create and just a one minute you should be able to create an impact to tell that this is what i can do for you the third important thing is how to be successful in the job interview which you apply for this some of the basic things obviously it's a version which i can share but since a limited time i have uh, i just shared few tips on how to face the interview and the fourth fourth thing is uh, why should someone hire you right it's it's a value add which you are bringing to the organization which you should put forward the first uh, f- final one is how can you b- help the community or uh, serve the community which you are going to work for when i say community it can be organization it can be academic it can be college as well so if you keep these five things in mind i'm sure with uh, your uh, basic ability of uh, basic communication skills put together and then uh, networking skills uh, learning skills all this put together you can definitely succeed in your organization you work for and you will definitely get clear most of the interviews if not all that's what i just wanted to sh- share and i'm always available uh, through my gmail or my linkedin you can always find me on there i am always available for your help and uh, thank you very much for listening to me i hope i am able to give at least two or three things or if not all the five if you can follow any of these two definitely that will help you in your future thanks a lot thank you mr prasanna for uh, sharing your thoughts on top skills required to achieve a great success in career 
Anand, we discussed on various uh, skill sets. What more the our buddies need to improve and achieve success in their career? Can you just uh, throw your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question and very difficult questions to answer <laughs> as well. Yes, yes. But if you really look at uh, the speakers, what they spoke today in this program, and uh, Dr. Gupta spoke about the three C's, that is confidence, competence, and commitment. That's really one good takeaway. You need to have it. We also talked about passion, and one needs to be really passionate about, uh, you know, making things happen. Then only you really go ahead. And uh, so we also talked about a proverb saying that technical skills will give you a job, soft skills will make you a leader. I think if you remember all these things, and if you really try to do according to that consciously, I think it's not difficult to, for the youngsters to really make a big career. And also. If you are not from a very reputed skills, not everybody can get graduated from IIT, IIM, IIC and all. You need not really worry. And not everybody can speak good English. For many of us across the world, English is not a first language. All of us are really learning. You need not, you try your best, but you need not worry about that. If you look at success stories like, you know, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, both of them, they didn't even have degree actually. Look at the way they build their career and how they become role models for all of us, many of us in the industry. So in my opinion, I think we need to really uh, carefully uh, remember what is our weakness and work on that and really build on that. And uh, also it's important to really have a totality of the communication skills and uh, keep you motivated always, that's important. And uh, we have a next speaker, Paul, uh, who is a uh, you know very well known uh, motivation motivational speaker and uh, he has trained many people and uh, let's listen to him and I'm sure we get uh, many more insights for our participants and also for us to really uh, to address the question what you asked. Let's invite uh, Mr. Paul to come on the dais and uh, deliver his talk and over to Mr. Paul. Thank you, Anand. Paul, we are waiting for you. You cannot not communicate. Greetings to all of you. I'm Paul, a soft skill trader and a proprietor of ALCE, Academy for Learning Communicative English. First of all, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Kunur, the president of LI's Academy, for giving me this wonderful opportunity to talk about the importance of communication skills to the LI students. How about we start this session with a small story. There is a traditional story narrated in the book You Can Win by Shiv Kera. I'm sure most of you might have heard about it. Just for the benefit of the doubt, for the people who have not heard, I would like to narrate the complete story. I hope you are all right with that. There was a character by name John, a woodcutter, who was working for five years in a company. But he never got a raise in his salary. On the other hand, we had another person by name Bill who joined just a year ago, but he received his salary and the Ike as well. Now, John, with a complete resentment, went to his boss and asked him why that Bill received his hike, but not him. The boss told that the number of trees that he was cutting for a very long time from the day that he started his work, it remains same. But Bill was able to cut more number of trees. Now, John was in a puzzle. He wanted to show to his boss that he could do it a better job. He went back and hit harder and he wanted to cut more number of trees. But unfortunately, he couldn't cut that. 
He came back back to his boss and told about what exactly happened. Now the boss suggested him why that you shouldn't go and approach Bill and asked what was that difference that he was making when he was cutting the tree. Similarly, he just went and asked Bill and he came to know that Bill was taking a break. Every time before cutting a tree, he was taking two minutes of break and he was sharpening his axe. So the moral of the story is that you have to sharpen the axe. Sharpening the axe means sharpening our mind. My dear friends, I have a question for you. When was the last time that we sharpened our mind? The moral was that past glory and education don't count for much. We have to continuously sharpen the axe. Sharpening the axe is nothing about sharpening the mind which we just learnt it. Yes, my dear friends, developing communication skills is also the need of the hour. If we don't sharpen our mind, we too may become like John, looking at the other's success. Today's topic is on the importance of communication skills. First of all, what is the meaning of communication skills? Communication means transmission of message from one person to the other. But the problem is, how am I communicating? Is that message is communicated to the person who is listening? The answer is no. Because most of the times what we want to communicate and what we have communicated entirely different. Now the question is, do we need English for communication? My dear friends, communication is an art that can be learned and developed. Similarly, English is a language that can be also learned and developed as well. But then why English? I can read your mind. Let's look at couple of points to justify why do we need English. Firstly, English is just a language, but due to its importance given in the society, most of the people have developed a complex. To be more precise, an inferiority complex. When we learn and speak fluent English, automatically we break that complex and feel better in our personal and professional life. That in turn gives better job opportunities or career opportunities for us. Secondly, anything you want to learn in this world, English gives a better access to information. Number three, when you learn English, you become more open-minded and get better opportunities and can crack any form of interviews and can become a better entrepreneur. Number four, research says that when you learn a new language, automatically our brain power increases. Do you want to get rusted with the brain? Definitely not. So you better learn the language to keep your brain active. Our creativity is developed and we get access to the world of entertainment would be number five. Number six, finally, the one who learns English can travel anywhere in the world and can increase his network and can break all the barriers of negativity 
and better status in the society. Having said that, when I started my speech, I used a quote by an Australian communication expert, Paul Wadzlawick, who said, you cannot not communicate. The meaning is, any way we will communicate, it may be through verbally or non-verbally. So it is better to communicate professionally and clearly so that we can achieve the global, the goal of communication. Whether you are an entry-level employee, a job seeker, or a senior manager, or a leader, or you may be a librarian or a HOD of a department, being able to communicate effectively is essential for your career development. Clear communication skills will not only take your career in the right direction, but also it will help you to land and to get into a right job that you wanted. So, to achieve this status, the only thing you have to do is to sharpen your axe every day. So are you ready to sharpen your mind every day? Then my request is just start developing your communication skills. That will open the door of knowledge for you. Finally, I would like to conclude this short session by quoting the words of Albert Hubbard who said, we should believe in the hand that works, brain that thinks, and the heart that loves. Thank you so much. Yes, indeed, soft skills are very essential to achieve success in everyone's life. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for delivering a wonderful talk on soft skills. Anand, do you have anything else to discuss further after so many wonderful and thoughtful, thought-provoking sessions? Yes, sir, you are absolutely right. We had a wonderful talks from eminent speakers. And after listening to all those talks, we have many participants asking questions, very interesting questions. Maybe we can take one by one. Uh, the first question I see here is Manisha, who is a fresh MLAC graduate from Kurukshetra University, asking a question. Dear sir, my name is Manisha and I am MLA student from Kurukshetra University and PZDLN from IGNO. I am unemployed and I am life member of LIS Academy. I am very thankful to LIS Academy for organizing such a wonderful program to help beginners in LIS profession. My question is when someone is technically competent but poor in English, is it compulsory to learn English to face interviews and why? So we request uh, Paul to answer this question. Paul, can you please take up the question and answer it? Hi Manisha, that was an interesting question. And I would love to answer that question with the word learn. Have you heard the word in English learn? L-E-A-R-N. Have you heard it? Yes. All of us are learning something because we want to earn. If you just remove that, the letter, the first letter L, it becomes earn. So let us break that barrier of learning something only because we have to earn from that. I always ask the same question to my students that why do you want to learn English? And the answer goes similarly what you asked. But if you ask me why should I learn English? I would say, I love English. Any language is for communicating with people and build a relationship. But nowadays, people are using the language to make money. But remember, money is a great servant, but a bad master. Apart from that, to answer your question, Stati statistically, English is the official language 
of 53 countries. That is a lot of people to meet and speak to. English is spoken as a first language by around 400 million people around the world. English is a language of the media industry. If you speak English, you won't need to rely on translations and subtitles anymore to enjoy your favorite books, songs, films and TV shows. English is also the language of the internet. I think you are aware of it. Many websites are written in English and you will be able to understand them and to take part in forums and discussions. English is based on a simple alphabet and it's fairly quick and easy to learn compared to the other languages. Then why we should wait not to learn English? I would like to complete answering your question with the proverb which goes don't remain like a frog in the well do you want to remain in the well or you want to come out and shine like the Sun I will leave the question to you I hope I have answered your questions thank you Thank you, Paul. Uh, now I request Dr. Nagappa to pick up the next question for answer. We have a question from uh, Sakshi Devi, MLA student from uh, Central University of Himachal Pradesh. Good morning, sir. My name is Sakshi Devi. I am from Himachal Pradesh and I am doing my master's in library and information science at Central University of Himachal Pradesh. My question is, ki, how can we prepare ourselves for other than library? Thank you. So this question is to Lakshmi Harsha. Can we request you to answer this? Hey, Sakshi Devi from uh, Himachal Pradesh. You have asked a very good question. I think this question must be there in pretty much every uh, LIS student who is either like, you know, passing out or has passed out very recently. If you ask me, like, you know, there are quite a few data science related opportunities out there because every company wants to uh, kind of like you know call out the insights out of uh, the data whatever they have collected so do look out for certain courses in linkedin or coursera or udemy or there are like you know quite a few uh, academic oriented uh, learning uh, websites that are out there on internet and do some certifications related to data science you will get umpteen number of opportunities similarly like you know you would have uh, done research methodology uh, subject in your LIS there will be opportunities like that of like you know the content writer content analyst technical writer such kind of jobs now honestly that's how I started my career as internet analyst uh, by by kind of like you know browsing through the website and getting the content that is required to develop a database and so it will help you a lot uh, so that's how you can switch to alternate careers uh, uh, and then like you know uh, it, it will be very interesting for sure you don't have to just sit in libraries but you can also like you know do such kind of uh, uh, jobs so there's a lot what i have covered in my uh, session uh, you might want to kind of like you know uh, relook at it thank you thank you lakshmi anand why can't you take one more question sure uh, the next question is from sakendra singh Vama from central university gujarat thanks to all i'm sakendra singh parmar PhD student at the School of Library Information Science, Central University of Gujarat, Gandhinagar. At the outset, thank you LIS Academy for providing such an inspiring event which will motivate the LIS students by answering their professional doubts. My question is, while working for an organization, sometimes we feel demotivated. The reasons could be rejection of our proposal or lack of appreciation or monetary losses like no timely promotion or a lesser increment. In such situation, we feel demoralized or even think of quitting the job. But as we share healthy relations with our colleagues or we may be involved in some crucial activities, we do not feel like taking the decisions to quit. Kindly guide as to how to tackle such situations. 
Thank you. So this question is to Lakshmi Harsha. Can we request you to answer this? Sagendra Singh uh, Verma from Gujarat University. You asked a very um, interesting uh, question, I must say. The reason is, I think, like, you know, each one of us does go through this kind of a situation when you get rejected. Uh, for something like, you know, you want to achieve uh, things, but it might not go the way you want. But that's part and parcel of uh, life. Let's admit that. But do try to kind of like, you know, understand why was your proposal rejected? What was lagging in your proposal? Okay. So take that particular feedback uh, honestly, as well as like, you know, seriously. Do work on it, upskill yourself. For many a times, like, you know, if I'm writing a proposal, maybe like, you know, my objective might not be very clear or at times like, you know, my outcome could not be very uh, uh, clear or sometimes like, you know, the monetary or like, you know, the cost benefit analysis might be missing, right? Okay, so just go to like, you know, particular root cause as to why were you rejected do kind of work on those talk to your friends talk to your uh, seniors and see how you can build that particular gap and do go back and never 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 give up let me tell you that in my like you know 18 years of my career yes i have faced that uh, kind of rejections but getting demotivated will not get you anything but trying 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 again is what will take you to like you know the destiny whatever you are uh, looking at so yeah that's my uh, suggestion to you and yeah all the best for your uh, phd yeah look forward to meet you sometime yeah. thank you lakshmi uh, now i request uh, dr nagapa to pick up the next question yeah here is the question from amrish from alliance university bangalore yes sir I am Amrish. I am working in Alliance University Library as a library assistant. I am thankful to LIS Academy organizing this wonderful program. My question is to Sri Braji Guptaji. Sir, I am motivated by your inspiring talk today. After listening to you, I feel that I get motivated today and after two days, I will again land in my routine problems of life. How can I remain motivated always like you? My other question is, can you please brief me few steps to transform my life to be of value to society? May I request uh, Braj Kishor Gupta ji to answer this question? Thank you Ambarish for asking a very interesting question. Let me ask you another question. When you eat in the morning, do you eat again in the afternoon or in the evening? You will say yes sir. So is the case. When you are demotivated, you must do things that would motivate you because motivation is like food. Just as we need food, so is the case with motivation. To remain motivated all the time or to remain motivated like me, you must be in the company of people who are motivated. You must read books by motivational speakers, motivational authors. You should watch videos you have so many youtube videos today you can also go to youtube and watch giant step videos the more you watch such videos the kind of people you have around you they all will make you motivated and if nothing is working and you are down and demotivated get in touch with me all consultation is free good question again two three steps to transform your life, I would say three letters A, B, C. Stop accusing others from today. Stop blaming others from today. And C is criticizing. Stop criticizing. These are the three things you should do. And lastly, you should also understand the value of self-discipline. No more discipline. From today, you should do something because you must do that. Let others not tell you what is right for you. If you can follow these, I'm sure you will be a transformed person. And my concluding line for you and for all youngsters who are budding leaders would be a line from my scripture and that is Atmano Mokshart 
आत्मनो मोक्षार्थ जगत हिताय चो मीनिंग देयर बाय योर सेलिब्रेशन योर लिबरेशन अलोंग विद द सेलिब्रेशन एंड लिबरेशन ऑफ सोसाइटी मस्ट बी योर गोल that is the essence of all leadership my friend and that is the essence and ideal of india which boasts of great great culture and india has been the beacon light for the world because of this objective and that is atmano mokchart jagat hitai cho thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you gupta ji anand can you take one more question sure so next question is uh, from sajan from jpm arts college iduki kerala dear sir my name is sajan cs i am working in sri jitra tirunal medical science and technology as a documentation assistant i am a lifetime member of lisa academy my membership id is lisa 0318 uh, i am thankful to lisa academy for organizing this type of wonderful program and getting us an opportunity to listen eminent speakers uh, sir what were the career while entering this profession how did you achieve them uh, do you think we should uh, update our targeted aims time to time uh, if so what's your experience in career making thank you sir uh, i think this question is uh, to prasanna thank you mr sajan for asking a wonderful question i would say set of questions uh it's a first question is all about how did uh, whether i had any career goal when i started my career uh, right or i career started my profession to be honest i didn't have a goal when i started it because any fresher it's very difficult to have a goal at that period of time when you are fresher but it's always good to have a goal once once you enter the profession or once you enter the career right and so it depends on the organization right your career goals always depends on the organization where you kind of enter and uh, you kind of look at the role you achieve or apply for where you have entered and then see what are the opportunities available within the organization and then slowly you kind of change your goal accordingly right if you take my example right which you have asked as well right definitely i initially didn't have it for first one year but and then slowly built on where i ke- kept a goal for myself that in first five years i should be in a position that where library doesn't need me right it may sound awkward but uh, that was a goal i had where i want to completely automate entire library stuff where people can request anything from anywhere without my presence in the library whether it is a research request or book as simple as book request that's what i achieved at the end of 5 years and then i realized uh, what value i am adding to the organization and then how can i use my skills uh, or uh, the abilities which i learned through my 5 years of my career or at my profession or at my uh, school schooling at ncsi right all my degree at my ncsi so only i started using that skills to move into internal communications and then i almost worked there for 10 12 years using uh, all the internal communication skills which i learned through the years and then i realized after 10 years wh- where i am where i am standing again i changed my goal to look at uh, challenging opportunity where i can contribute more to a bigger organization that's when i moved to amazon where my role is completely even though the, it may sound uh, similar in terms of internal communication but my role in amazon now is completely different in terms of my target audience so that's when i for to put it in simple terms definitely you should have a goal maybe first one year you will be trying to understand the organization slowly then you will start should having simple goals of first one year and then three years and then 5 years at the end of 3 to 5 years you should see whether you are happy with your job that is first and foremost important once you know that you are happy with your job then you can look at where you can grow yourself either within the organization if you feel that you are done enough you don't have a growth opportunity uh, you should never hesitate whether it's 3 years or 5 years you should always move out look out for a better opportunity i i believe that i answered your question thank you thank you prasanna uh, so now i would request nagappa to pick up the next question Uh, actually interesting is like uh, i have to repose that question to you anand can you take this question yeah what is that question from mintu mathe mli student of sb college kerala good evening sir i am mintu mathu studying mli sc in sb college chennai first of all i express my sincere gratitude towards lis academy for this wonderful opportunity LIS not 515 is my membership ID in LIS Academy. 
सर आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क सम क्वेश्चन टू क्लियर माई डाउट्स सर आई एम नॉट वेल इन इंग्लिश बट आई वुड लाइक टू बी ए गुड लाइब्रेरी हाउ कैन आई ओवर कम ए लैंग्वेज बैरियर्स कुड यू एक्सप्लेन द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ लाइब्रेरियंस इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ डिजिटल लाइब्रेरीज वाट अबाउट द रोल ऑफ लाइब्रेरीज एंड लाइब्रेरियंस इन ए पैंडमिक सिचुएशन सर दीज आर माई क्वेश्चन Thank you. Thank you, Minto, for asking this interesting question. You you have actually asked three, four, four questions. First one is, I am not good in English, but I would like to be a good librarian. How can I overcome my English barrier? I don't think you should really seriously worry about this. Uh, for many of us, English is not a first language in India. So be confident, keep learning on the job, and uh, language has never become a big barrier for people to make a career. so that's my answer for your first question your second question is uh, could you explain the importance of librarians in the digital library that's an interesting question and uh, if you come out of the college when you join uh, you know practicing librarianship particularly if you join bigger libraries like iits iisc nits and all they only have more digital content and less of a print content so you are expected to really have a good skills in managing digital uh, library content and also to come out with services but actually you need not worry too much about that you know you come out of that when you join the institutions on the job you can learn all these things only thing is you need to really have that commitment and the passion to learn and excel that i think uh, it will be it will not be very difficult to really pick up those skills and you have one more question what about role of libraries and librarians in the pandemic situation so we practicing professionals are really experiencing the impact of the pandemic pandemic has really uh, you know disturbed every domain and uh, lis domain is no disturbance coming to libraries pandemic has really Um, made a influence on leadership of institutions to close down the libraries and i have seen that happening both in academic and also corporate sector so that has really forced librarians to think about going digital making content available to people and uh, how to make it uh, accessible seamlessly i think uh, that's a very interesting challenge i think many librarians both in corporates and in academics have responded very positively Uh, so that's really a, a change and the profession has responded very significantly thank you i hope i answered all your questions thank you anand we have one more question for you from varsha mla student from bharti dasan university yeah sure i can take up this question hello i am varsha final year mla student studying at bharti dasan university tiruchirappalli after my mla is I will have to get exposure to real time work environment. Regarding this, I have few queries. Is there any institution in India that offers training to fresh library science graduates and to give exposure to real time working environment especially automated and digital library related? Is there any additional courses to improve my IT skills related to library after my MLIS? as i'm very much interested in doing my phd research what are the important areas in the present context particularly it related i can choose for doing my research thank you our first question is is there any institution in india which offers real time practical training after master degrees i think when you do master degree now the uh, many of the universities have really incorporated to some extent the practical experience uh, probably you might have gone for internship to reputed uh, libraries for a month or two uh, if you think that is not enough uh, so if you want to really learn uh, you know new skills practical skills uh, bigger libraries i am aware about for example iit madras iit uh, gauhati iit most of the iits and iisc we take fresh graduates as trainees and we pay handsome Uh, in, uh, internship uh, scholarship and uh, we put you on the job on different sections to really learn all of that so look out for uh, these institutions they advertise for trainee positions you can apply and get that there so that's my answer to your first question and uh, your second question is, is there any additional course after mlis 
i think uh, it depends on your interest and uh, your uh, future plans if you really want to focus more on digital library and all maybe it's a good idea to go ahead and do uh, you know independent computer science course maybe pg diploma something like that so you can do that way or if you want to really focus on multimedia and all you can focus on multimedia related thing publishing is another area not very related to lis domain but not many people are doing you can do that or if you want to identify in a niche areas of lis uh the data management is a new thing you can a uh, lot of publishers including elsevier are offering uh, the data management courses on their websites you can look out and you can really learn so as i said it really depends on your future plan and you can do courses accordingly there are many opportunities uh, in the internet world today now your third question what are the topics uh, for research in it domain for phd in lis so if i remember correctly you are a mlic student it's nice to see you being very aspirational uh, but my suggestion is i can give you lot of topics uh, to do mlic but it's important that you figure out which topic you are interested in if topic may be very good if you are not really interested in that you may not really do a great job in that my suggestion for, uh, towards that is you work for one or two years look at how practical scenario appears to you and see what are the burning problems pick up a burning problem in lis domain wherein you are interested i think that's where you can really do a justice to your phd that's my advice and if you just want to have a topics i think you can really pick up topics like data management machine learning and all these things so that's my answer to your third question i hope i answered all your questions thank you for asking such questions thank you anand just to add to your uh, last question uh, again uh, varsha you need to look into uh, some of the hot topic as you said which can be fruitful after 4 to 5 years i mean to say once you complete your research or phd that should be boom in the industry so that way you can take a topic which is a future uh, futuristic in nature so that you will be like no uh, uh, getting a very good opportunities from various industries i hope you understood what i mean to say anand anything, right. else, anything think, else to uh, look uh, we have we now? have one last question uh, dr nagappa i think interestingly that is for you you can answer this oh i will be happy to answer and this is the question from manoranjan satpati from gujarat central university i am manoranjan satpati doing my secondary mlb by sc uh, from central university gujarat uh, gandhinagar school of library and information science I thank LIS Academy for bringing such interesting topics. I have a question to ask. What are the key points should we notice uh, in an institutional website before going to attend an interview? Thank you. Yeah, Manoranjan, you have asked a very interesting question. Especially the uh, most of the candidates who come for an interview, it may be a corporate or academic. One has to go through the institutional website. but whereas many of the candidates who come for the interview fail to do so if you go through the institution you will come to understand the pulses of the organization what is their vision mission objectives what are the practices they are following what are the rankings they have what is their student intake what are the domains they are offering the courses or if you come to the industry what are the domains they are working and what is the library's condition there what is the classification they follow or the cataloging practices they have what kind of collection they have housed what is the total collection they have okay because the reason if you don't go through the website thoroughly you may get many questions which they are following because you are going to recruited by that company or organization that means before going to the interview it is equally important for an a candidate like you go through each and every content which is available in the website and more importantly look for the latest news published about an organization that will give you an idea what exactly the recognitions or awards or what kind of media publications are covered about the organization second thing is like look after their like no collaboration or association with various organization that that will give you an idea 
where the organization is standing when compared to rest of the organization whether that organization is suitable for you or not these kind of questions can be answered yourself before getting into in you know, an interview hope i have answered your question thank you dr nagappa that was a very nice answer with this uh, we have come to the conclusion dear friends thank you very much for being with us today we had a delightful event and career advice by all the experts to you all i thank dr anand bairappa and dr nagappa bakkananavar for moderating the event i thank sri braj kishor gupta ji for giving a very excellent motivational talk i thank shrimati lakshmi and mr prasanna for best career counseling that they have given to you all i thank mr Na lakshmi narayana of net analytics for signing mo with lis academy i thank all the student community who have asked the questions to all the experts and taken best advice from the experts i thank each one of you and we assure you to be with all of you in future days to come my sincere request and advice to all the lis students and budding librarians to join lis academy life membership which is free of cost please visit lis academy website at lisacademy.org and sign up for the life membership which is free of cost we assure you we will always be with you in future days to come let us all work together for rebuilding the profession from the beginners of library science we want to see the future of lis profession in all of you thank you thank you one and all